Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are speaking with one of our favorite people, Manny Pacheco. Oh. Hey, Manny. <laughs> How sweet. <laughs> Manny, I'm a big fan of your website, uh, ForgottenHollywood.com. Yes. And uh, I don't think people understand that you have, that website is a great reference, a great uh, a tool for people who love old movies, love Hollywood, uh, modern Hollywood doings, as well as uh, historic stuff. Mm. And I noticed, and of course you write about your, um, uh, you not only write about stars and people in Hollywood, but you write about your personal appearances. And you recently went to the uh, Columbus Film Festival, which you've done many times before. Am I correct? Well, just twice. Uh, it's oh, called okay. the, the Columbus Moving Pictures Film Festival. It used to be called Cinevent. Ah. And it's, it's, but that's been going on for, you know, a good 50 years. It's a, it's an old, treasured, Midwestern classic film festival that was run uh, ably as Cinevent for many, many, many years. And, of course, uh, unfortunately, as 50 years pass, you know, we lose some of the, the people who run these things. And it was re um, now the person who runs it is this young lady. Um not very old at all. I would I would venture to say, and I'm sure she might be over 30, but she sure looks like she's in her 20s, but has a absolute love for for classic films. Her name is Samantha Glasser, studied um, film, actually. And, and she uh, understands how to put together a great film festival that uh, kind of starts Memorial Day, kind of, th that film festival kind of gets us into Memorial Day, much like Cinecon, which I'll talk about in a second, gets us into Labor Day. And uh, for me, it was my second time going. I promise you, I'll be back there again. The uh, dealers area where you can get all sorts of uh, photo glossies and posters, and of course my books, and all kinds of tchotchkes and, and, and just wonderful take home stuff is one of the largest of any classic film festival. I mean, you can walk in there and spend a couple of hours for sure. And of course the films, here's the key. The key to this film festival is they only show film through celluloid. If it's not available on celluloid, they will not show the film. They want everybody to hear that sound of the, of the projector running. <laughs> and there is something, there's a real charm to that. And this last film festival that I went a couple of weeks ago now, uh, we I was able to see the original version. It's the it's a British import, but the original version of the Blue Lagoon that came out in 1949. I did not know that the Brooke Shields version was a remake. Wow. But I do now, you learn something at these festivals. And the movie starred the lovely Gene Simmons, so, yeah, I mean, every year you get to see, uh, uh, the year before I saw this, here's a great story. I saw this film called Guilty Bystander. It's a film noir with Zachary Scott. It was deemed unavailable for years and years and years, and then somehow they found it, they re, you know, they refurbished it. It, it, it came out, they ran it at this film festival a year ago. Months later, Eddie Muller had it for his, uh, film noir show that he does every Saturday night at TCM. Yeah. I guarantee you one of the Hollywood historians or authors that go to this film festival, and there are many, got to TCM, got them a hold of a copy of this by permission, and now it is available, been seen on TCM, and of course it, this all started at this film festival in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, mm -hmm. great festival. And you mentioned Cinecon. We've been with you at Cinecon, which is a a uh, huge uh, Hollywood film festival. Right, you and Art uh, traveled with me. We got to uh, see some exciting films. I got to introduce a Spencer Tracy film when I was with you, uh, when he was at Fox, called Mad Love. Again, Cinecon celebrates not the big hit movies, but those movies that nobody ever sees. And what is exciting, what happens at Columbus, what happened at Cinecon, you, you think that these movies wouldn't have an audience, but you know they, they're so rare and so eminently watchable that they fill the room i mean it's like it's like a, a full house for the, the more obscure the movie the busier the movie seems to be yeah. it's, it's crazy and you you happen to like uh those those television um uh films that, that were filmed uh, that special way I, I, 
kinescope. The, the kinescope, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Kinecon at Cinecon, right? You happen right. to like that part of what Cinecon does too. So there's a tribute to early television. So mm -hmm. Cinecon is, you know, something. Now that I've been to, I mean, a good six, seven, eight times. So yeah. 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 And at Cinecon, I remember especially uh, not being introduced to, but seeing a, a number of soundies. The yes. Old, the old sound um, shorts, shorts of yeah. bands. That's right. And they were they were available in jukeboxes, cinema jukeboxes, if you yeah, can believe fascinating that. Fascinating history. And sure. as you say, you learn a whole lot at these festivals. Yeah. And they're wonderful. You meet great people, too. One that I want to go to, and I wanted to go to this year, but I found out that they're doing this every other year, and they did it last year, was the inaugural event last year. Now next year will be the second uh, annual, is the, uh, the big sight and sound festival that's going to go on at the Library of Congress, mm -hmm. right there in Washington, D.C. That should be exciting because you know they're going to put together a program that mm -hmm. I believe is going to be pristine. I think that this is a great opportunity to also tour the Library of Congress, which would be exciting. Exactly. Of course, all of my books are in the Library of Congress. So what an exciting uh, field trip that would be, and, and exactly. the ability to sell some books, visit the Library of Congress, Hobnob with, I, I think, uh, true historians, not just of Hollywood, but real historians of, of the United States, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah. And boy, what, how can I, I, I you know, I, I, I kick myself not going to the first one. Well, you're going to make up for it. Maybe we'll join you next year. Yeah. Oh, that'd be, oh, that would be amazing. Now, yeah. that would be an amazing trip. I, 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 I smell a field trip coming on. Uh, and of course, I couldn't I couldn't not mention the fact that I have been to a number of international uh, society of the, the Laurel and Hardy aficionados with their Sons of the Desert convention that happens every other year. Um, this year, they're going to be in Sacramento. Unfortunately, I missed that one. But next year, it looks like they may be in San Diego. Well, so that's a going. Book, trip book for me. I can head on down, do my thing, maybe yep. get a room, but maybe just drive back home. And of course, you get to see these wonderful films showcasing our boys, uh, Stan and, and and Babe, Oliver Hardy. We call him Babe, of course, if you're part of the, the, the group. And of course, uh, their nemesis, Finn, the great character actor, Jimmy Finlayson, and all the other great actors, directors that they know so well. Everybody wears their fez at the event. Of course, I have a I have a fez as well, and every, I mean, who doesn't have a fez in their closet at one? Yeah, I, John, John, you must have one. Well, I can't get I, it right I now. Do, yeah. I, if I did, if it wasn't across the room, I, I would get it right now. And you know, these conventions, of course, the big highlight convention is the, the Turner Classic Movies convention, and we've spent lots of time talking about that every year. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do at least want to acknowledge that they exist, but there's conventions going on. Uh, Eddie Muller tours the the countryside with his film noir con uh, 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 film festivals that he has everywhere, including Palm Springs with the Arthur Lyons Film Festival that's held annually, and up in uh, at the Castro Theater in in San Francisco where Eddie Muller has every year. But he travels all ac across the country showcasing film noirs through a series of film festivals that he does when he's not working at TCM. So there are those film festivals. Uh, I mean, there are just so many uh, out there. I, I mean, there's, um, there's a cheapy horror film festival that's been established uh, by um, our good friend uh, Kelly Kitchens. Uh, down in uh, in Texas, that they they just the inaugural film festival was last year. I was really thrilled that they did this one because one of the films they they, they featured was one of my all time favorite cheapy horror films, The Killer Shrews, <laughs> with uh, with uh, James Best. Uh, it, it's 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 a cheap cheapy, but I mean if you like horror films of the 1950s, you you would have to want to go to this film festival held again also. Uh, for the first time last year. So there's so many film festivals out there. I could probably spend all of my hard-earned dollars and all of my free time away from the radio station and writing books and, and of course, doing my work at the at the colleges, just attending film festivals, and I would be a very happy cat. <laughs> well, I think everybody <laughs> ought to take the hint and uh, check out a film festival near you. There's so many 
they have so many different themes, so many different uh, genres. Uh, it's always fun. It's always a, a wonderful learning experience. And you always meet great people. Yeah, especially yeah. some of the people who've made the films. It's yeah. A fun. yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you do actually meet people who are yeah. family of the, of these folks. And sometimes every once in a while you get a, an, an 80 or 90 year old star making an appearance. And that's as well. Yeah. Nothing, nothing to sneeze at, Art. Believe me when I say that. <laughs> I tried to do that off, off screen. Anyway, so I can go cough and sneeze. Thank you very much, Manny. And we look forward to our report from next year's Columbus Film Festival. Let's chat soon. Yes, I agree. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.